For over three decades, if you were looking to purchase a practical, fun, and mature sport compact car, the Volkswagen GTI was basically the enthusiast pick across the world. However, here in America, we've had another vehicle that has always kind of lived in the shadows of the GTI. And today, I'm just outside of North Carolina, driving on the Tail of the Dragon, which is a very famous road here on the East Coast, driving this small. This is the all new seventh generation 2019 Volkswagen Jetta GLI. Volkswagen says it's essentially, basically just a sedan version of the GTI with more space in the back seat. So the big question I want answered, is this all new GLI finally the GTI sedan we've been wanting? That's what we're here to find out. A little over a year ago, Volkswagen finally took the wraps off the all new Mark 7 Jetta. And this was a big deal for the company because this meant the first time that VW finally moved over their best selling car to the ubiquitous MQV platform. This is their scalable architecture that is basically underpinning the rest of their vehicles, even the giant size Atlas rides on this platform. So this was an all new Jetta finally from the ground up and it was basically sharing everything with the Volkswagen Golf. The Golf, as you guys know, is one of the best small cars you can buy across the globe. So you can see for the front fascia of the GLI, this is the performance version of the Jetta. Think of it again as a Volkswagen Golf GTI in sedan form. However, the previous generation always had a few corners that were kind of cut to kind of make this thing not as good as the GTI, which we'll talk about in the styling or in the driving portion later on. But let me first talk, talk about the look of this vehicle. Now, when the Mark 7 Jetta came out, a lot of you thought that the look was very conservative, very Audi-esque, and that's basically still carrying over. However, Volkswagen has definitely added uh, some nice flavorings here to make it look a little bit more aggressive. The first thing you're gonna notice, that red line that goes across the new Volkswagen grille with the red GLI badge. It definitely looks fantastic in this pure white exterior color with the black accents. All the GLI models will come with the projector style LED headlights where you'll get an LED low and high beam. You'll have a C-shaped LED daytime running light, just in incandescent turn signals. However, unlike this Jetta, the standard Jetta sedan, fog lights are not available on the GLI, which is kind of annoying because you can get LED fogs on the GTI. I think it looks a little bit too plain at the lower fascia. You have, you know, these larger grill openings here to kind of give it a little, again, a little bit more of an aggressive look. The hood also has a few more creases here. And overall, it's definitely a handsome looking car. Definitely not, definitely not quite as aggressive as you get uh, on the GTI, but I think Volkswagen did a good job with making the GLI sedan look a lot more distinctive than the base Jettas. From the side profile of the new GLI, you can tell obviously it doesn't share a single body panel with its GTI hatchback counterpart. But let me first talk about the wheels. This one here is the 35th anniversary model. You can distinguish it from this fender badge here that says GLI 35. It again represents the fact that VW has been building this car or selling it here in America since 1984. That's how old the actual car is. And you can take your pick between an S, uh, this 35th anniversary, anniversary model or an Autobahn model, which has unique styling features to distinguish this one as the 35th anniversary. Now, the wheels, all of them will come with 18 inch wheels. I do prefer the five spoke design you get with the 35th anniversary models. They're a gray finish with the red outer lip. They're wrapped in two 25, uh, 45 series tires on 18 inch wheels. These are the optional summer performance tires if you guys really wanna put some serious rubber on your GLI. Honestly, they look good, although I'm surprised that VW didn't go with a 19 inch wheel, but the GT also also does an 18 inch wheel. The tires could also be a little bit thicker in my opinion, maybe going up to about a 10 millimeter thicker, a 235. Now, uh, you'll be able to distinguish this one as the 35th anniversary model, not just from the badge, but from the black mirror, mirror covers. Uh, they also have an LED turn signal and then the black roof. If you guys want a pano sunroof, you have to get the Autobahn model as that's the only model that actually gives you the pano sunroof included when you guys go for that trim. Now, the uh, previous generation Jetta was actually shorter than this by three inches. Volkswagen has extended the wheelbase by about an inch at around 105 
12.1 inches overall and its overall length now is at 185.1 inches so it's also been increased by three inches versus the old Jetta GLI and it's also about 16 or 17 inches longer than a GTI four dose so this is considerably larger it's got a longer wheelbase obviously it's going to give you basically more rear seat space than a GTI and that's one of the reasons why you would choose this it has a very traditional sedan look not really much in terms of the swooping rear coupe look but I do like how for this generation Jetta Volkswagen has added some more character lines along the side to give this thing a little bit more of a premium more aggressive look whereas before the previous generation looked a little bit soft from the side profile. From the rear of the new GLI you can see that conservative theme is very much carried over to the rear end. The GLI models will give you this very subtle very subtle black rear lip spoiler which does look good with the pure white exterior color. All Jetta GLI models will also come with an LED tail light where you'll have an LED turn signal you have LED reverse lights and LED brake lights and then the bumper itself has a unique rear diffuser below and actual genuine exhaust tips unlike the standard jetter which are fake I'll let you guys listen to hear what that engine sounds like And it sounds pretty good. It's the typical Volkswagen two liter turbocharged motor. The same motor out of the GTI. We'll go into the test drive later on. But overall, I think they've done a really good job at making this thing look a little bit like an Audi, which I really liked on the regular Jetta. Now the trunk capacity has also been slightly improved over the previous generation. It's actually a huge trunk. Volkswagen says this measures around 14 point one cubic feet of space. Now it's actually a little bit smaller than what you get in like a Honda Civic Si, which gives you about 15. And then keep in mind the Volkswagen GTI offers about 22 cubic feet of space or 52 if you fold down the seats. Now these seats also still fold down, which is good, which will expand the cargo capacity. And then if you look underneath the floor, VW does give you a temporary spare tire. So enough about the outside of the GLI. Let's move on to the interior of this vehicle and see how Volkswagen has differentiated it from the lesser Jettas. First things first, here is the current key fob that Volkswagen does. No switchblade key. Uh, their Intelligent Access Sentry key is standard equipment. You're on the base model, so you don't have to go for this Autobahn like my tester. But as you approach the door handle here, you're going to see, just like the standard Jetta, there's a little place where you can touch your finger there. That'll lock the doors to unlock it. Sensor on the back of the handle. Just touch it, and that will unlock the door for you now. Looking at the interior for this uh, new GLI, if you guys better basically like black because this is the only interior color combination you can, you can get. Uh, this Autobahn model has an upgraded uh, leatherette seat which are heated and cooled. Definitely a nice feature. It's standard on the Autobahn model. Really great that Volkswagen gives you that. You also have kind of like a six-way power driver seat with two-way lumber. You have three-person memory, so that's definitely a nice upscale feature that you can't get on something like Civic Si. Um, the door panels here, you can see, they look very identical. You have this silver-painted plastic trim. The steering wheel is also unique. It's a flat bottom, red stitching. Looks very nice, and the digital cockpit display that you get on the Autobahn model looks nice. This is very similar to the uh, SEL Premium. The seats, Volkswagen says, are actually similar. They didn't really increase the bolstering, just put a different color and a different material on it. Now, getting inside, you instantly feel that this vehicle is a little bit lower. Volkswagen says it's about 0.6 inches lower than the regular Jetta. And then when you shut the door, it sounds really solid. This is the MQB platform. Uh, it has this nice hefty feel. This is a German car. That's kind of what you expect uh, from Volkswagen. So it's really all making a nice first impression. Now to start the vehicle up, um, as you can see, my tester is the lovely six-speed manual. Uh, push button, or the button to start the engine is down here. Put the clutch in and then push the button to fire up the engine. Now you can see the gauges, they are customizable because I have the digital cockpit display. The engine itself, it has a really nice noise when you have it in sport mode because it's basically trying to amplify the engine noise. That's very much a, a thing with VWs and it's included on the GLI model. Now, um, the Volkswagen Jetta in general, um, first of all, Android, op, Apple, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard equipment regardless of which trim you get. Uh, the interior for this generation was definitely improved over the previous model. The Mark VI was heavily criticized for having a cheap interior. This is basically the same soft touch material that I showed you on the regular Jetta. It's all hard touch plastic down here, which does have a kind of a cheap scratchy feel. Um, the plastic down here is also a little bit on the cheap side. Dual zone automatic climate control is included uh, uh, basically on all the trims. Um, heated seats are also included if you guys go for just the cloth seats. But as you can see, my tester has cooled seats, which work really well. It's a very nice addition. The door panels are also soft touch, the same off of the dashboard. So the touch points are correct here. Down here, 
It is slightly padded, but it's not leather stitch. It's some kind of cheap feeling plastics down here. The Golf definitely feels a little bit higher quality. So Volkswagen is obviously cutting costs a little bit, but uh, they're cutting costs, I think, in good areas uh, that a lot of people probably won't notice. I love the steering wheel, love the flat bottom design, love all the buttons here in the controls. If you guys go for the DSG, you'll have paddle shifters. Clearly, obviously, this one does not. Um, the, the center stack here, you can see, hasn't really changed. You still have uh, your dual zone climate control, your vents down here. Um, which I wish there was this car had a little bit more aluminum trim to kind of break up the black plastic I mean you have this plastic carbon fiber look like trim, you know, which do looks nice But I would have preferred an aluminum trim like what's on the door handles This is actually real aluminum feels like the same thing on the steering wheel, which is nice this digital cockpit display is basically like a dumbed down version of Audi's MMI interface you can see you can kind of change the way the gauges look by pushing a button on the steering wheel and you can kind of adjust what you want this to show. The gauges also change color based on the drive mode that you have it in, or you can also customize the color based on whatever mode you, um, or whatever color you'd like. You can see most of the, the times the car will default to a blue. I actually really prefer the red that you get in the Sport, or you can just change that when you go into the sub menus. Now, looking over here, this is the eight inch Volkswagen CarNet infotainment system. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as you can said. It's very quick, it's very snappy. There's the Waze integration, which is very, very nice. Um, there is no embedded navigation, at least on this particular one. I don't see it. Uh, this is a fully loaded Autobahn. I'm imagining that Volkswagen dealers may offer it as a port option or something like that. It's probably just a USB, but there's no actually in-car GPS in this vehicle. So just keep that in mind. You're going to have to use the Apple CarPlay, which is fine. Most people tend to use that anyways. You can see there's the layout for the satellite radio and your presets. Love the graphics. It looks great. VW does a really good job with everything here. So I can't really complain about that. Going to the car icon here, you can see there are some performance gauges. There's a boost gauge here. I believe this car makes around 16 pounds of boost. You can see your oil, t your coolant temperature and your oil temperature and stuff like that. Lap timer. So um, all unique stuff to the GLI. Love that VW is giving this car a little bit more of a special feel. When you put the vehicle into reverse, no 360 camera, just a standard backup camera uh, with the trajectory lines, uh, but no parking sensors either. So um, keep that in mind. Some of the you know different markets will have the parking sensors or the 360 camera. They don't offer that, but very good backup camera. It's got great resolution, so I'm pretty happy with that overall. This kind of annoys me how the volume display icon doesn't stay the position it's in when you start to turn it. It kind of affects my OCD a little bit. The Beats audio system in this car is 400 watts. I believe it's nine speakers plus a sub. It sounds pretty good. It's very class competitive, not quite as premium and good sounding as what I experienced in the new Mazda 3. That's kind of where I'm going to benchmark the cabin. Volkswagen used to be the benchmark in terms of the material quality and the overall ambiance. They are definitely no longer that, but this still feels nicer than what you get in the Honda Civic and maybe even nicer than the Corolla. And I love the fact that you have heated and cooled seats, which you can turn on at the same time if you'd like to do so. Not sure why. The shifter, six-speed manual, as I said. It's got relatively longer throws than I would like, but it feels really good. Um, the clutch also has medium take up. It's very easy to drive this vehicle. There's good feel. Um, lots of empty buttons here, which kind of annoys me. You can turn off the stability control there. Um, if you'd like, you can only turn it into like a full on sport mode. Your drive mode selector is here, as you can see, custom, normal, eco, and sport. If you guys go for the 35th anniversary models, it will have a fifth, a fifth driving mode comfort because of the adaptive dampers. Now, one thing I really like about this car is the interchangeable um, colors for the uh, inter interior. Volkswagen basically offers 10 different colors where you could change the uh, interior color for. And it's great because you don't actually have to get the fully loaded model. Instead, VW just kind of gives it to you on every trim. Um, and the lights, the ambient lighting, as you can see here, has so many different colors and it just looks very cool. Nice upscale touch. You don't typically find this in this particular segment of vehicle. The seats, um, like I said, they're heated and cooled and they're very comfortable. Although I just wish that they held you in place more. The GTI seats are more aggressively bolstered. The glove compartment you can see here is huge. It's damped, but not lined with felt. And then if you guys want a sunroof, it's basically like a half ass panoramic sunroof in between. Uh, it only comes on this Autobahn model, uh, which is nice. And it really lets in a lot of light, but overall, the interior of the GLI feels a little bit nicer than the standard Jetta, not quite as 
premium in terms of the materials as the GTI. However, they do give you some tech features like the digital cockpit display and the cooled seats. You can't get that on GTI, but GTI offers adaptive cruise, which this car doesn't offer. Instead, you just have the automatic emergency braking and forward collision alert. Now, because the GLI is a larger vehicle than the GTI, all the space essentially went into the back seat of this vehicle. Because of that increase in the length in the wheelbase, you get two inches more legroom back here. Volkswagen says the space is around 37 and a half uh, inches of legroom, which is again, two more than what you get in the GTI. You, as you can see, I'm five foot seven. Uh, I'm not very tall, obviously, but I have really good space back here. There is a fairly large hump that eats into the space of the middle passenger, uh, but there's good foot space underneath the front seats. Really nice amounts of uh, leg room. No rear seat vents back here, I'm sad to report. And then the materials are also hard touch plastic, but you do have an armrest that folds down. This one being the 35th anniversary model has the cloth seats with the red stitching. Um, so it is a little Spartan in this particular model. Keep in mind that this is not the GTI. They had to decontent it a little, but a lot of American families are going to be liking the extra legroom you get in the back. So besides the styling updates and the suspension tweaks, the other big news with the GLI is what's going on underneath the hood here. Now in the past, Volkswagen has always kind of neutered the GLI in terms of the power output. Now you're basically getting all the power that the GTI with the performance package used to give you. And it's actually very impressive numbers. This is the same two liter TSI turbocharged direct injection four cylinder, their EA888 motor. It's a really great motor. It makes 228 horsepower on all GLIs and a very impressive 258 pound feet of torque. That's the same power that you get in the 2019 G GTIs, which are now basically standard with the performance package. It all goes out through the front wheels through an electronic uh, differential, limited slip diff. VW calls it the VAQ differential. And as I said before, front wheel drive, you can take your pick between a six speed manual like this one, or Volkswagen also offers a new seven speed dual clutch transmission. VW says the take rate is roughly around 50-50 uh, for the GTI, so it'll be curious to see what the take rate will end up being for the GLI. Now, fuel economy is actually not bad considering the amount of power this puts out. 25 in the city and 32 on the highway, regardless of which transmission you choose. It does recommend to use premium gas. If you want that full power, you have to put premium in this vehicle. Now, Volkswagen also didn't really have the final numbers for the weight. A GTI weighs roughly around 3,200 pounds. They said this was probably around 100 pounds heavier, um, so figure around 33. 3,400 pounds. The competition set in this this segment is interesting because Civic Si has roughly 23 less horsepower and 66 foot-pounds of torque less. This is way more powerful also than Elantra Sport Kia Forte GT. You could compare this to a Subaru WRX, which has another 40 horsepower over this, and it's all-wheel drive, but it's also heavier. Or you can also compare it to the Hyundai Veloster N, which has either 250 or 275 horsepower. So Volkswagen has carved a really nice sweet spot for this vehicle. But you guys have probably been wondering, let's get out on the road and see how this uh, powertrain performs. So here on the media drive for the 2019 Jetta GLI, probably the best part is getting uh, drive partners. And for my drive partner today, I actually have a very familiar face. I've been watching him on YouTube for a while now. He used to be uh, the guy for Motor Trend for Ignition and Head to Head. This is Jason Camisa. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna let him drive first because you know he secretly is a Volkswagen guy. Not really secretly. He's got like three Volkswagens in your. Dream. I have three Volkswagens. Okay. Here's the, I, I I don't like to use the term that I'm a Volkswagen guy. Okay. I like good cars. Yeah. And, and VW. This is a good car. This is this is a really good car. Like this is he. I was just driving the GLI earlier. This is a GLI Autobahn with a stick shift, which is exactly how it should be. Exactly how it should be. <laughs> but we're on our way to the tail of the dragon, uh, and it's kind of raining, and it's like around 45 degrees, and we're on summer tires. So Jason wanted to do a burnout, which we're still gonna go do, I but mean, maybe. You can't not. <laughs> yeah. How could you? It's a GLI. I mean, the whole point of this car is that. Hold on. Let's just do it. All right. So hold on. Traction deactivated. There's no one behind us. We can't put the emergency brake on. Let's see what happens. Oh, it cut power! <laughs> no, we can't do it in second. Wheel hop. Wheel hopping. Ooh. <laughs> the smell of roasted Michelin. Is, Is that Michelin or Pirelli? <laughs> I think it's a. Uh... I don't know, it smells like tire and maybe some clutch. A little bit of clutch. Either way, <laughs> uh, I will say you cannot do a uh, static burnout because it cuts power in the middle of it. Okay. Which is very unfortunate. Yes. However, the temperature has dropped from 45 to 42. Okay. And now it's foggy, so <laughs> we probably can't do horrible things. Yes, but I was actually surprised. Did it have some torque steer a little bit when we did that? It, it was more like the, the 
the torque of this engine ripping the front cross out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot going on, and that was pretty abusive. So really yeah, fun. most owners probably won't do that, and I'm sure you guys are probably going to say, "Oh my God, this poor car! It's it's a press car. It lives a hard life." But it's yeah, it's the last. You know, that's, the, <laughs> that's the least of what's going to happen to this poor thing. Once you know, the car magazines get a hold of it and do testing. Where is the road? Whoa, Rather the, foggy. the fog is thick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And temperature continues to drop, so you're gonna slow down and not kill us. Right? You guys like Sophia. Probably not kill him. But GLI's back. Yes, the GLI is back, and they've brought back the manual transmission, which is nice. Love the fact that you can get the stick with, you know, the highest trim. They offer the stick on all the trims. And this one is the most expensive one, and it's just under 30 grand. Like, yeah. it's five grand cheaper than the GTI, and I'm like, how did they do that? And he'll tell you that they got rid of, or they put some cheap materials in here, which I kind of, yes, I agree with him, but it, they put the cheap materials in the places where you're not going to touch, like down here in the lower part, so the dash and the door is still fine for me, and then you've got that, you know, pretty display, the digital cockpit display so I'm happy with it is it as nice as the new Mazda 3 no but it's it's fairly nice and it has a few features that the Mazda doesn't have like cooled seats uh, panoramic sunroof although it's kind of like a half-assed panoramic sunroof <laughs> two-thirds of a panoramic <laughs> yes but it is bigger than the small tiny one that you get in the new Mazda 3 that I just drove last week you can't get a manual on a Mazda 3 other than that, that the hatchback hatchback front drive. drive right and honestly this engine in this car is so good so so good they didn't neuter it from GTI like, it feels like it's making more than the 228 that it's rated at. Good, like, a really good amount of torque. I mean, I'd be curious to know if Volkswagen would ever consider a Jetta R. Like, like an R version. They should do. <laughs> they should do a Jetta R. I mean, the thing is, they, they obviously, they pull out money out of the Jetta, and it's, it's a lot cheaper than Golf. Yeah. And I wonder if they think there would be a market for a $40,000 performance Jetta. I think they should try. Yeah. Because every generation, they've done something to hamper... Jetta GLI. Yeah. There's like there's a reason why the name GLI doesn't have the same power as the name GTI. Yeah. And it's because every time they do something, um, and they should really try like Jetta R and see what happens. Yeah. And honestly, if this car is five grand cheaper than you know GTI, a Jetta R could be five grand cheaper than yeah. Golf R, and that's like what forty five thousand. Forty. Well, I think they started like forty. Four, they're, they're like forty two, like a low end or something, but um, really expensive. But, but a yeah. thirty eight thousand dollar four wheel drive, three hundred horsepower. Jetta. Yeah. Well, you know what it would be? It would be an Audi A3. Yeah. <laughs> Although this has a much bigger back seat. Yep. Like this car is roughly 17 inches longer than a GTI. It's much larger. It's got a two Long inches more. Yeah, yeah. Two, two inches longer more in the wheelbase. Although the Golf, it's a hatchback, has more cargo space. But I mean, I can see why people would prefer something like this. At least here in America, we don't like hatchbacks in America. But it definitely. So they say, and then everyone buys SUVs. I, I know. Hatchbacks. <laughs> I know. It's just because it sits up higher. Everyone wants to sit up higher, but. But it's got all kinds of lovely fake engine noises. Watch it. Let's see if we can. We have a van in front of us doing 11 miles an hour. You guys can probably hear that. Yeah, it's and all, all coming through the speakers. Yes, and honestly, I think it sounds good. It doesn't sound like that five-cylinder noise like the old one does, right. but you know, it is a lot of fake engine noise. And we can turn it off. So you hold on. We got this guy is now slowing down to 27 miles an hour. Well, to be fair, that the fog is pretty damn thick. <laughs> but okay, so let's do sound check of. This is the loud mode. Let's go back to the first gear. Ready? Okay, and then we'll do that same exact thing in quiet mode. It's almost as loud. Yeah, I mean, at least in full throttle it was, yeah. but it almost sounds like this car has an intake on it. Yeah. So no need to put a cold air on it. The car already comes with it. Comes it from the factory. Acoustically, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. But dynamically, how does it feel compared to the GTI for, for you? It feels more, it feels bigger. Yeah. I mean, it, part of that's got to be the wheelbase. Right. Um, part of it's possibly weight. They haven't told us what weight I, yet. I, somebody told me it was 100 pounds heavier, but then they said they had to confirm. So, I mean, if it was, it'd be like around 3,400 pounds, something like yeah. that. And it feels like it, it honestly feels like it rides better than GTI. I, I, I think of GTI. The problem is we're on different roads. I've never been here before. Yeah. So I don't know what, I mean, these roads don't look perfect and we're not feeling anything. So it rides really well. Yeah. My mental image of GTI is it's different than this. Yeah. Um, but we'll, you know, we'll have to talk to the engineers about that. Yeah. Make sure. And they like to call this now like basically just the true sedan version of the GTI because it's got the same powertrain, it's got the independent rear suspension, same, diff. same, yeah, same diff, and then same platform now, although just slightly larger. But 
I, I honestly, when I drove it, I thought it felt really good. Um, I like the way the, 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 the suspension feels. The steering is really good. The shifter is really good. We have to try out um, the dual clutch later. It's the new seven speed. I know Jason's like, nah, I like the manual, but. Yeah, but it's a, it's a new seven speed. <laughs> yeah, new seven it. speed, right. I mean, you buy a <laughs> manual GTI, a manual GLI. Yes. Part of the beauty of this car is how wonderful it is to drive a manual. These are easy. Everything's super mm -hmm. light. It's easy to be smooth. Did you feel that shift? No, I didn't. Did you feel that But he's shift? he's really good at manual so, transmission, though. That's a, a double clutch down shift to first. Wow. Did you feel it at all? No, it's I didn't. It's not me. I mean, it, of course it's me. I did it all. But, but I mean, part of it is the, the car works with you as a driver to, yeah. to make it very easy for you to be smooth. Right. And that's the joy of a Volkswagen manual. Right. Not everyone gets that right. And honestly, like the way he drives, he drives manual so well, like those rev matching automat or manuals, there's no need when Jason's driving because it's so, it's smooth. <laughs> we should all be practicing. Here we go, back into first at 30 to 29 miles an hour. Yes. Honestly, you put me to shame because I am not that smooth. So. Work. We're going to put him to work. Do your homework. It's, it's, it's because I don't drive stick every day anymore. I need to go back to a manual. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So at least the PDK. I'll get rid of the PDK. Right. Right. Go buy yourself a manual Porsche. You didn't think you were going to put a camera in front of me and have to be nice, did you? No, I didn't think so. That's okay. You can go ahead and roast me because I know people were upset when I got a PDK Porsche. And I kind of regret it, but it's it's fine because it's a lease. I'll just I'll switch back to a manual afterwards. Put it on swapalease.com. Get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what an exciting exhaler. I can't believe we made all the flew across the country <laughs> and drove all the way to Tail of the Dragon to do 33 miles an hour. It, behind a, a cargo van. Behind a Chevy cargo van. Yes, in the wet. Like, I really oh, hope. Passing zone. I can't see if there I are any cars coming. Come on, dude. Just pull over. <laughs> I flashed that. <laughs> You were, that was ballsy, Jason. I wouldn't have done it. Wow, it was at 30 we, miles an hour. We, we lived, so it's okay. Yeah, exactly. It would have all been on camera. It would have been worth it. Can you imagine us going, there's the airbags. It's good. I want plaid cloth seats. You want plaid cloth seats? And big bolsters. That's my biggest problem is that this car is on the seats. I mean, you know, the whole thing about it, half of the reason you buy a GTI over a Golf, mm -hmm. the power and the diff and the suspension and all the rest of the stuff and brakes, is you get in the car and it feels incredibly special. You have deeply bolstered seats, usually with plaid cloth, leather if you get the top spec, um, and that's immediately missing from this car. Also, there, there's no road ahead of us. It's just I, a white. It's just a white. I don't <laughs> yeah, this is such a shame because we could be going so much faster and there could be something in front of us that we're going to run over. So <laughs> thank you for going slower. <laughs> I don't want to die either. I know it appears that I have a death so to start off the test drive, I am in the 35th anniversary model, which is slightly different than the Autobahn version that I drove because this car is the only one that has the DCC, the dynamic, the adaptive dampers, basically. It adds that extra driving mode where you can go basically at a comfort mode, but this actually will adjust the suspension. The one thing I noticed when you put the car into sport, it gets noticeably louder from that sound induction noise. It, it sounds like the car is an intake, but let's go out on the road. Uh, I'm in the manual model, which is the one that I would prefer personally prefer I'll get if I get if I get a chance to do some filming in the DSG I will but I'm definitely going to focus more on the manual but let's see how this performs <laughs> oh my god, I miss driving a manual. This is this is fantastic. This puts a huge smile on my face. Now, the one thing I'm also not liking is the fact that this, you know, 35th anniversary model, the conventional gauge is the smaller screen. Definitely doesn't look all that impressive. The Autobahn model is well worth the $2,000 upcharge, but listen to that. <laughs> that sounds great. Even though it's a fake noise, I think it sounds fantastic, so I'm okay with that fake noise, and God, this thing is quick. So much quicker than an SI. Oh! <laughs> wow, this car actually feels noticeably stiffer as well in, in its sport mode with the dynamic uh, dampers. It's got a lowered suspension, as I said. The steering is so good. It just has so much feel. The suspension is definitely stiffer, but you feel a little bit of body lean. I have to drive a GTI back to back to really decide if this thing feels, you know, more stiff or less stiff or whatnot. But God, this manual has really good throws. A little bit longer than I would like them to be, but the clutch is just so easy to modulate. You can rev match pretty easily. Now, granted, I'm not the most professional rev matcher, but 
This is such a cool car. It's such a good car. I'm really, really impressed. So much torque. It has really good pull in second gear. And visibility is also really good in this car. It's just such an easy car to daily drive. It's super impressive. I think a lot of you who are looking for, you know, or thinking manuals are dead, performance sedans are dead, you need to go back to Volkswagen because they still offer a lot of driving joy. I just drove the new Mazda 3, and I have to say I'm liking this car a lot more now. Let's try to uh, see how the acceleration is. I'm gonna turn the stability control into its sport setting. I don't think you can completely defeat it. It's an ESC Sport right now. We'll do a clutch dump here. Ooh, a little bit of wheel hop there. It's having a little trouble putting the power down, but no torque steer. <laughs> that electronic uh, limited slip diff is definitely trying to put the power down. Let's put the traction control back on. But really, when you start going through some corners in this car, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> Sorry, Mazda, but you need to do a Speed 3. This is so, so planted. So much response to the steering. The tires, the summer tires on this one really tell you exactly what the front tires are doing. God, could it use more power? Could Volkswagen do an R version? Sure. I mean, does this thing even need all-wheel drive? Not really. That, you know, that specialness that you get in the GTI has been carried over into this GLI. And that's kind of what the old one was missing a little bit. God. And this thing will pull all the way to 6,900 RPM almost before it starts cutting the power. This is just, oh, I'm at a loss for words. This road, this car, so damn good. Oh, hot hatches or performance sport compacts, they're not dead, they're alive and well. And Volkswagen is, you know, giving us what enthusiasts want. They're saving the manual. It's the manual transmission. You can get it on the top trim. The chassis feels good. It still rides really comfortably too. Even though I'm in sport mode right now, I'm going in these twisties. The car just puts the power down. It's not beating me up. It's quiet in here as well. Oh, <laughs> a little bit of understeer when you start to really push it. Reminds you this is a front wheel drive car, but that's okay. It's, you know, it's a front wheel drive car. This isn't a, an Audi RS5 or anything like that, but it, it has some hints of specialness that you know, I personally love. Now, let me put the car into its comfort mode here. And with the adaptive dampers, you're going to notice one thing. Let's just kind of drive the car normally. It's very quiet in here, so it's not droney like the Subaru WRX can get. Um, it, you know, turns into just a regular commuter car. The suspension, you notice, automatically gets softer. So I really am surprised that VW is not offering the DCC adaptive dampers on the Autobahn model. My guess is when this 35th anniversary model stops being produced, they may carry it over to the Autobahn model as an option. They haven't announced. It's also missing adaptive cruise control. Not sure why you can't get that on this car. You can get it in Canada, though. Um, but you know, heated or you got heated and cooled seats. A heated steering wheel is not available in America. However, the cooled seats are a nice addition, and I would really love to see the Pano sunroof that the Autobahn gives you. But as you can see here, really nice. Now, you notice here with it, it's in comfort mode. That's with it at full throttle in second. It's it still has a little bit of a growl, but I'll put it into sport mode, and you'll hear the difference. It sounds like it has an intake. <laughs> like, no need to get a, a cold air intake. This car already comes with it from the factory. <laughs> now, I'm going to try another clutch dump here. This time, I'm going to leave the stability control on. Do, we'll do a 2000 dump. It does a little more. It feels like it gets to 60 and around six seconds, maybe 6.2. The DSG I'm imagining is gonna be quicker because it can put the power down better. You can use the launch control. This does not like being launched at, you know, over 2000 RPM. It just doesn't really like the abuse. But other than that, I'm finding very little to complain with this car. It's really a great car that a lot of enthusiasts are going to love. It's gonna be the perfect daily driver for a lot of people. So in the past, although the GLI has always kind of lived in the shadows of the GTI hatchback, 
before. Volkswagen is confident that they have finally designed a GLI that basically will fill the shoes as a GTI sedan for the American buyer who wants a little bit more space. As you guys saw from the test drive, it's fully independent suspension, which is again tuned, sport tuned for the GLI. It's lowered by 0.6 inches. It's got the same motor as the GTI. It's got the same lovely six speed, uh, great seven speed dual clutch. It's got more room in the interior. It has a few tech features that the GTI doesn't offer. And the best part about the GLI is the price tag. This car starts at $25,995. That's $1,700 less than a Volkswagen GTI on the base end. And you get standard LED headlights, which are optional on the GTI. And if you're going to start comparing it to the rest of the competition, this is also only $1,600 more expensive than a Honda Civic Si sedan, which honestly, for the increase in power, the technology, the premium features, it really makes the Volkswagen GLI the true bargain uh, of 2019 if you guys are looking for a performance sedan that you could essentially daily drive every day and be super comfortable. Now, from there on out, it really doesn't get that much more expensive. This 35th anniversary model is only $1,000 more expensive. This is the six-speed manual. Add $800 if you guys want the DSG, and you get these black accents with the 35th anniversary model. Now, if you guys want features like a sunroof, the leather interior with the cooled seats, the digital cockpit display, the Autobahn model will only set you about set you back about $29,195 plus the $995 destination. All in, this is going to be just under $30,000 for a fully loaded model. That's $5,000 less expensive than a GTI. So I'm going to go back to the original question I asked: Is this now the GTI sedan of the Volkswagen lineup? I'm very confident to say that it is. While sure, there are some elements of the vehicle where, as Jason said earlier in the test drive, it's not quite as aggressively tuned and the seats aren't quite as deeply bolstered. I think those are differences that I think are going to be okay with the GLI buyer uh, because it essentially gives you most of what you're looking in the GTI, but in a more traditional sedan wrapper with a conventional trunk and more space in the back seat. And it's significantly cheaper to boot. So if you guys are looking for a performance sedan, you need to make sure and put this one at the very top of your list. It basically is. Uh, I rank it higher than the, the current Civic Si, and if you guys don't need the all-wheel drive, I'd get this over the Subaru WRX as well. It's just a really great daily driver. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Volkswagen Jetta GLI. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.